Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Today we are going to talk about Model D. Frequent viewers might have noticed a suspicious lack of Behringer gear on this channel. Ok, there is an old episode from the time when I had around 200 subscribers, but recently I became aware of rumors that I get paid for not including their instruments on the show. This is of course untrue. Not that I am immune to monetary incentives, but it just isn't necessary for one reason. I am the biggest Uli Beringer fan. However, I can't let his reputation suffer because of this fake news, so it is about time to feature one of his fabulous synths. Uli Beringer, Swiss Sigma male and sovereign of his own city in China, is not only up there with the greatest entrepreneurs of all time, a passionate piano player known for unorthodox business practices, bold marketing campaigns, unmatched creativity when it comes to intellectual property and the best lawyers in the world. World, he also, in spite of being around 20 years older than me, still looks significantly younger. Damn, I want a piece of gear. At the first glance, the D is ticking all the boxes. Timeless layout that has just recently been blatantly copied by an American niche manufacturer. 1.7 kilograms of unbridled analog power and the patented filter. Mostly monophonic tones are based on three massive oscillators offering standard waveforms but come with a disturbing lack of PWM. There is no modern witchcraft like DCOs or auto-tuning. Switch on the totally not 432Hz concert pitch, adjust master tune and set individual tuning of oscillator 2 and 3 to taste. Synth antiques have a reputation of having significant pitch drift, less than perfect octave scaling and depending on temperature, humidity and midichlorian count of the user, the organic feel of the D can be a bit too close to the originals for people used to modern synths. You will have to factor in longer warm up times and there are calibration procedures involving sysex and a voltmeter, however you will be rewarded with ultra fat saw stacks. Monstrous detunes and basic chords. External input is normaled to a feedback loop for additional bass oomph and total chaos. I like the two colors of noise and oscillator 3 can be set to a fixed frequency for drones and modulations. The ladder filter with low and high pass Keyboard scaling and the not so classic 3 knob plus switch envelope will sound familiar even to the less initiated. Filter resonance is, as is of course tradition, a bass killer. And itself oscillation can be used as a sign oscillator. There's an added LFO for pitch and filter modulation and filter EG, noise and oscillator 3 can be used as modulation sources without patching. Speaking of, the Bogue is Eurorack compatible and its semi-modular architecture allows for internal patchings and integration in a larger setup. This synth engine will spit out earth-shattering bass, smooth leads, Stabs, Retro Sound FX, and DFAM like percussion sounds with ease. I 
Similar 5-pin MIDI and the USB port can be used for MIDI interfacing and communication with the Synth Tribe software. Most of the settings can be morphed to the Synth using the tuning switch when turning it on. The rear panel is minimalist with MIDI channel dip switches and two output level options. For the price of one 2022 Mini Moog, you can get at least 19 Behringer Ds, three more than polychaining can handle. It is safe to say that Behringer created a powerful instrument based on a rich tradition. Has time come to take legal steps against the trolls behind this wall of hate? Figuratively, not literally. You have already heard the D in today's intro tune. That's warm, fat and only slightly out of tune. Time for some pure and undiluted folk bass. That synth certainly enjoys its place in the spotlight. Generous sweet spots and well-chosen parameter ranges keep things exciting even in a minimalist arrangement like this. The Behringer FX pedals I ordered didn't arrive in time before the holidays. I wanna know if my usual pedal collection will do the trick. I would probably opt for an edgier bass synth here, but that's a matter of personal preference. The instrument stays in character even through the thick haze of effects. Coming up with a new genre every week is hard work. Fortunately, I can shamelessly rip off 2023 ready, super smooth, contemporary, hanseatic, melodic techno. <laughs> is a grown-up sounding real analog. It can be capricious like a gang of Beringer fanboys, but you will be hard-pressed to get better value for money because of ultra uli sci-fi supply chain and manufacturing facilities. Its only real competitor in that price range, the Roland SEO2 offers a more modern take on the subject, but I personally prefer the untamed sound and more comfortable UI of the D. We all know that the controversy surrounding this instrument has little to do with its actual utility in music production and in deference to the cardiac health of my lawyer I will now leave the highway to the danger zone. What is more, when it comes to complete and utter disrespect for intellectual property, I should definitely keep my mouth shut. Thanks for watching and see you next year. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and welcome to the monthly Vokoda shoutouts. Tier 4. It goes without saying that Uli's Finest can be used as a Vokoda carrier as well. I'm using TAL Vokoda for processing.
TS5 and 6. When working on the Roland JP8080 episode, I totally neglected the voice modulator. Let's see if it's any good. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel, see you next year!